Scott, thank you for those very nice words. And before I get started, I did want to just say hey to a couple of guys that were nice enough to come up tonight. Mark Kilpatrick, who's an old friend of mine from Atlanta and loves this place and the University of Georgia. Uh, and then also Miles Marks, who was a couple of years behind me at school and uh, at Baylor and had, had a brother, Tom, that was in my class. And then two guys that I truly love, Tommy Hopper and John Harrison, who were a year behind me here in, in Lupton Hall with me. And we remain dear friends today. And if they realized that I was only given a 20-minute window to speak tonight, they would be laughing out loud. <laughs> 34 and a half years ago, when I first walked on this campus, I was not nearly as excited as I am right now. My mother and father literally dra dragged me up here screaming from my hometown of Shadydale, Georgia, <laughs> which you may know is a lovely suburb of Monticello, Georgia which is a thriving metropolis of 2,500 people in middle Georgia. I had absolutely no interest whatsoever in going to boarding school. My older brother was leaving for college, so my little sister and I no longer had that third parent. I was doing pretty well academically, and believe it or not, doing fairly well athletically. And Tricia Yearwood, was working for my parents at the time. And in full disclosure, I sincerely thought that she was gonna peak as a lounge singer at the Holiday Inn in Madison. <laughs> so clearly I don't have much prognostication skills in, in the talent business. Well, my parents had other ideas about my lack of desire to come to Baylor. They realized that in a small town, as wonderful as it is, it can get fairly stagnant academically, athletically, and socially. And so the final straw for me was my mother came in my room the sophomore year, and I was in my normal position, laying on the floor, phone in hand, watching the Braves, food strewn all over the room, no school books in sight. And she said she had had it. She was not going to watch me waste my natural talent. I never really focused on the waste part. I was so thrilled she mentioned natu natural talent <laughs> because I'd kind of been somewhat on a little bit of a bad streak and I'd been justifiably getting more criticism than I was getting praise at home. It wasn't until the next day that I really realized what waste meant. My mother and dad began discussing me going to another school. I just naively assumed that meant that I would go to a, a bigger school, maybe in Macon or, or Athens. But I did not realize at the time that my 23-year-old basketball coach had brought up the idea of boarding school to my parents. This young man was fresh out of Swanee. You may have heard the name Bill Cox. Bill uh, had just come down to my little hometown to be our basketball coach. And my mom and dad had been very instrumental in starting the small private school in Monticello. And they often invited teachers and coaches, especially ones that didn't have local family over to their house for dinner. And so they became very close friends with Coach Cox. Matter of fact, he still receives a birthday note every April Fool's Day from my, from my mother and elicits nose jokes about that big, massive nose of his <laughs> from my father. Well, it was, it was no surprise to me that Coach Cox was recruited to, a, to come to a much more impressive place. But what I did not realize was that his recommendation for me would change my life. See, when I got here for my first day, again, as I said earlier, I was not very happy. There was an orientation for new students, and my parents recognized another family that was here that day. The other family was a family called the uh, Emmett Evans family from Day City, Florida. They had, the, Miss Evans had gone to college at the University of Georgia with my parents in the 60s. And my dad leans over and says, you know, his grandfather's in the Forbes 400 richest people 
in the United States. I went, well, that's interesting because I just met him, and he's the least impressive person I've ever met in my entire life. So afterwards, I have a very tearful goodbye with my sweet parents, and we then go to a meeting of new students in the library. So I walk in the library. I see a guy sitting there by himself. I went over and introduced myself. Hi, I'm Sam Holmes. And this gentleman said, hi, I'm Hunter McShann. And I said, well, Hunter, I'm, I'm from Monticello, Georgia. Where are you from? He says, well, I'm from McShann, Alabama. <laughs> I don't remember one thing that we talked about in the stu student orientation. All I could think about, I've met two people. One's a rich dork. And the other person is so prominent, he's come from a hometown named after his family. <laughs> I felt totally outclassed and realized that I was not in Mayberry any longer. <laughs> well, the good Lord has is a great sense of humor because to this day, Emmett and Hunter are two of my very dearest friends. We were in each other's wedding. My children call Emmett uncle. And... Hunter's daughter, Katie, who is also a proud Baylor grad, is getting married to my oldest nephew this summer. <laughs> so things got much, much better, and I am thrilled to be here tonight with all of you amazing students. It is such an honor for me to be amongst you, the best and brightest at this phenomenal school. I hope you won't mind if I do tell you a couple of special experiences that I had at Baylor, and then I'd love to share with you your, some of my thoughts on your future. What I learned at Baylor was that how and why are as important in learning as what. I had some iconic teachers here, like Kennedy, Lonza, Lockrow, Miller, Stewart, Huey, Lewis, but I'd love to just talk about two, if I could, please. One was Dr. Finn Billy. See, what meant absolutely nothing in his class. It was all how or why. Dr. Billy and I had absolutely zero in common. I love sports, the Republican Party, <laughs> and my faith. Well, old Finn didn't know or care that Herschel Walker was the greatest football player of all time. He certainly did not share my belief that Ronald Reagan was the best president of all time. And he really didn't think that me being a Southern Baptist absolved my responsibility of learning how to be a better creative writer. I lost count of how many times I went to go see Dr. Billy outside of class. He would patiently try his best to help me. I never became a good writer, but I hope that he respected my interest in becoming a good writer as much as I respected his interest in me. The other that I would love to talk about, he, he was also mentioned as a scholarship, uh, a memorial scholarship, is the late coach John Chu. I'll try not to get emotional when I talk about him because I still do to this day. I had never met anyone like him in my entire life when I walked into his AP European class. His energy, his personality, his zest for life truly changed my life. We had heard at school that he had cancer, but we didn't know what cancer meant. He'd had a big chunk taken out of his neck, but there's, I didn't think it was any big deal. I mean, he ran every morning, he taught school all day long, he coached tennis and wrestling uh, uh, and after school. He was a dorm parent. He had a beautiful wife, child. He loved my sport of basketball, and I loved his subject of history. He took a deep interest in me, and you really can't understand the impact a teacher taking interest in you, especially when you're a dorm student like I was, who came from a very, very close family, and I was really homesick at the time. Now, that interest did not stop him from ragging on me and ragging on everybody else, but all of us knew that it was only out of love. A few years after college, my friend Hunter and I went to visit him in the hospital. The day we went to see him, he was very sick. His, his illness had, had accelerated and his health was really declining. When we walked in, he instantly recognized us, which was a thrill. 
But what followed was classic Coach Chu. I was choking up, and, and I, I kind of stutter, as you can probably already tell. And I get a little nervous, and I said, you know, me, me and Hunter wanted to, and he stopped. He said, Holmes, I told you not to go to the University of Georgia. Your damn grammar is awful. <laughs> I really do tear up when I think about the impact that his 16 years had here and the thousands of young men and women that his life changed. I learned so many things from him, but the one that resonates most is to live each day to the fullest, no matter how challenging life can be. Well, again, on to the athletic side. I mentioned academic, athletic. The athletic side, in spite of the fact that I had a grandfather played football at the University of Georgia, that my father not only was a three-year letterman and a two-year starter, but also played briefly for the Dallas Cowboys. But as Scott said, I was a very, very average athlete. It became apparent early that the only sport that I had a chance to, to compete in here would be basketball. I had no idea at the time that three co coaches here would turn me into an, a starter, again, albeit a very low-skilled one. But more importantly, they helped me become a man and, importantly, jo enjoy relationships that continue today. As I, as I mentioned earlier, Coach Cox and I started on campus at the same time, so he clearly knew how mediocre a basketball player I was. But off the court, he was an absolute lifesaver to me. It was so comforting to have one familiar face that you knew and could count on. It has been so rewarding to me to remain his close friend today, and I certainly see that nose back there. <laughs> I will never know what Beth saw in him, and I will, can't imagine what dear Coach Payne thought when Coach Cox came and asked him for his lovely daughter's hand. But I am so proud of you, Coach. You raised a beautiful daughter and son, and your career in the classroom and on the court has been inspiring. Now, Cox and I weren't the only basketball people who entered Baylor in the fall of 1981. There was this very young, smooth, good-looking dude from the University of Georgia named Coach Scott Wilson. <laughs> Sadly, I lost track of him and don't know where he is today. <laughs> Last but not least was Coach Austin Clark who came in the middle of my, the fall of my senior year. We'd had a really rough junior year. Bill Murdoch's brother Mike and I were on the same team. We had a tough junior year. So the school made a change, but for, I can't, for whatever reason, uh, obviously they didn't talk to us about it, Coach Clark didn't get here until the middle of the fall. To say that we were ill-prepared for his regimen <laughs> would have been a greatest understatement of all time. He was tough as nails and demanded respect. I have had the pleasure of being around some great coaches in my life from a high school level, college level, pro level, and I can tell you there ain't a better basketball coach in the world than Coach Clark. And I also don't know a finer person than Coach Clark. I take great strides, I mean, excuse me, great pride in being a member of his first team. And in spite of the fact that our record was not up to its lofty standards, now, we did beat that little boys' school down the street two out of three times my senior year. But I'm very proud to be a small part of his amazing 33 years at Baylor. My children love it when I bring them by here. And any time we're within four hours of Chattanooga, we just mysteriously have to drop by. And we take them down to the little athletic museum area. There's no mention of my basketball team there. <laughs> And there's not even a mention of that Iceman Award I won my senior year that I seem to always find a way to bring up in family dinners, but no mention of that down there either. But I tell you what they, I have made my children understand is that the friendships that I had with my teammates and the respect and the values that I learned from those three basketball coaches have stayed with me and I'll be forever indebted. Last about my Baylor experience was socially. Now, I have to admit, the social part was never a real big problem for me. <laughs> but Baylor made a lasting impression on me. When I was growing up in the small town in the 1970s, I had never gone to school with an African-American child. I didn't know a Jewish person. 
I'd never traveled outside the country, so I had never met anybody from the international areas. Coming to Baylor and getting involved gave me a chance to expand my horizons and to realize that there were people that might not look like me, nor were raised by me, raised like me, but there were fantastic people. I lived in Lupton Hall as a disciple of Coach Jimmy Duke. He was a man that gave his entire life to Baylor. You think Coach Duke cared about your color or your religion or your country? Heck no, all he cared about was making sure you got the most out of Baylor that you possibly could. He had been a legendary basketball coach before he retired and became Dean of Admissions. So you would think that I maybe got some preferential treatment. I was the only person in Lupton who played basketball. Absolutely not. He treated me with the same love and respect that he treated every other person in that dorm. That resonated with me then and it remains with me today. Okay, enough about my mediocre experiences. I want to speak directly to you current students. You would not be here tonight if each of you was not a very special person. I know your family and friends are so proud of you, as are the people who have donated money to provide these scholarships. It is truly one of the greatest honors of my life to be able to help deserving young people. And Aaron, I'm very proud of you, son. You've got a wonderful future and a wonderful family. It's been a treat for me to get to know you tonight. My plan, my pleas for you tonight are very simple. I'd love to talk to you for a second about taking advantage of every opportunity you have here at Baylor, getting out of your comfort zone every single day, and following your passions. I was walking through the old chapel recently, and I read with amazement the list of 20 plus year teachers here at Baylor. So many names that I remember with great affection and candidly some that still scare the bejesus out of me. <laughs> what was so profound for me was to see how lucky you are to have so many of the teachers that were here when I was here that are still here imparting their love and their wisdom. Don't miss out on an opportunity to get to know and learn from the Stovers, the Kennedys, the Hubs, the Cox, the Celepinos, the Hoopers, the Lockrows, to name a few. I sure am glad that I did. And I'm also glad that I learned from the giants like Worsham and Key and Barks and High and Daring. Speaking of High and Daring, I, I, I am still scarred for the most disrespectful thing I ever did when I was at Baylor. Going to the chapel one day, Mr. High looks down and sees I don't have any socks on and tells me to go back to Lupton and get socks on. I don't know what I was thinking. My dad would kill me. I've never told him the story, by the way. I wouldn't be here right now if I had told him the story. <laughs> I went around the chapel, came right back in, never put the socks on. Sadly, he was still the door when I came back. <laughs> so I got exactly what I deserved, which were three major league, and I mean world-class paddles from, Dr. from Mr. Daring, <laughs> and I deserved them too. So, Mr. I, 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 I'm just so... Sorry I did that, and, and I, I promise you I'm not that disrespectful anymore, but I have to admit, I still don't wear socks for this day. <laughs> Didn't mean that I should have been that disrespectful. As I said earlier, the second thing I want to talk about is get out of your comfort zone. I am so thankful again that I did. Even though I loved passionately my Lupton Hall friends, every night after study hall, I'd go walk the campus. I'd go see Emmett and Hunter and all the small town boys at Trustee. I'd go see that cerebral gang at Hunter. I'd go see my international buddies down at Probasco. And even though I loved my board, boarding boys, during the day I always hung out in the day school lounge. And even though most of my buddies were jocks, I loved my Sundance and walkabout friends. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. More often than not, put those dadgum cell phones down. Turn off the laptop. Shut down the video games. Look your classmates in the eye. Take interest in each other. Be there for each other. Love, laugh, cry, 
inspire, encourage. You are around the coolest students and teachers in the world. Take advantage of this time. Let me let you in on a secret. In a couple of years, no one's going to care how many likes you have on Snapchat. No one's going to care who the best Instagrammer is or tweeter. But they will remember and you will remember the persons or persons who truly cared about you. Like most people my age, I have experienced the greatest highs in life marriage and the birth of children. But I've also experienced the worst lows you can have in life. A loss of child, loss of sibling. And you know who was always there for me? Friends here at Baylor. I know some of you look around and say, especially you younger kids, okay Fossil, you don't <laughs> understand anything about my generation and technology. But let me tell you what I do know. A text is better than a no text is better than a hug. No Snapchat is better than a call. And no Facebook is better than the physical presence of a friend that has invested time in you as you have them. Lastly, have passions. Have passions and follow those passions. Your generation has, generation has so many distractions that mine don't have, did not have. I worry that your interests will be a mile, mile wide and an inch deep. I am so appreciative that Baylor allowed me to develop passions that remain today. My last story, I had a pretty good little academic year my junior year, so for some unknown reason they put me in physics my senior year. Aaron, you're in, you're in physics now, but you can handle it. I, I was in there for 10 minutes and I was so dadgum outclassed Dr. Taylor was the smartest person I'd ever seen in my life. He used to take a group down to Six Flags. Of course, when I'm at Six Flags, I was thinking about cute girls. They had a KC and Sunshine concert one time we were there. <laughs> the last thing I was thinking about was some velocity test going down the screen machine. <laughs> so thankfully, Baylor and my parents allowed me to drop physics, and I got to take three cool electives that enhanced the passions. I got to take Dr. Miller's uh, movie class, which I love movies. I got to take a stat class with Dr. Kennedy, which opened my eyes up to numbers in the real estate business, which clearly has been pretty helpful for me in my business. And I got to take a current events class from my beloved Coach Chu, who finally made me realize that reading the sports page only every day was not going to be as helpful for me as to read the business section, the metro section, the international section. You're so blessed to be here at a school where teachers have a passion. And that passion is you. All of these wonderful teachers could have chosen careers that would have been more financially rewarding to them, but they instead chose a route that makes a profound difference. Honor these fine people, develop passions, and push yourself to explore them to the fullest. I promise you, life is so much richer when you do. I am so proud of each and every one of you, and I cannot wait to follow your future endeavors. Years from now, when you've experienced success, please remember to give back to those people into those institutions that have meant so much to you. Over the holidays, I read Dr. Barks' fabulous book on his years at Baylor, Walking the Hill. He lamented that when he went back to see if scholarship recipients donated money later in life, most of them had not. I did the exact same exercise when I was chairman at the University of Georgia, and sadly, I found a very similar experience. I trust this will not be the same for you fine people. Always strive to provide an opportunity for a deserving young girl or boy out there. My parents said that the toughest thing they ever did was dropping me off at Baylor. They have also said it was the absolute best thing they ever did as parents. My paternal grandmother used to say that education and manners 
can take you places that money never can. Boy, was she prophetic. Thanks so much to that smooth, young assistant basketball coach, Scott Wilson, who came back to Baylor and is taking this venerable institution to new heights. I cannot express how proud I am of him. He is a magnetic leader, but most importantly, he loves each and every person, especially the students on this campus. He has made Baylor better than ever, and I'm so thankful that he has gotten me re-engaged here, and it's an, it's an honor to be a trustee along with so many amazing special people that are involved here at Baylor. Thousands of students have passed through these halls that are much more impressive and much more accomplished than me. But none are more thankful or more appreciative for the opportunity to be a Baylor Red Raider. God bless you, and God bless this school that we all deeply love. Thank you.